good morning everyone firstly i have this is my, and thanks to parts for um, having me here um, this is quite daunting because i'm in a room full of experts i am i am a lawyer and um, what we have been doing in our firm for the last maybe 15 20 years is that we told each person in the firm that apart from doing law which is whatever type of law you want to do try and create some domain expertise in a particular industry very few law firms follow that path of trying to understand their clients business industry so various people have started in our firm doing various someone looks at aviation someone looks at uh, uh, bitcoin i took education uh, uh, and again by accident because for the last 15 years i've been advising one large private school chain in india which has a lot of preschools and a lot of uh, k12 schools and i keep telling them that i've learned whatever I've been able to learn because of the work I've done for them from their first agreement. So whether it's a litigation, fee regulation, RTE, opening of schools, foreign investment. So we've been doing a lot of work in this area and I thought I'll try and share some perspectives at least from what experiences I've had as a lawyer advising a client and how we've seen a number of these regulatory challenges uh, affecting even some of our low cost uh, uh, school clients when they want to set up in India. Uh, and private schools uh, from the perspective of the various regulations that impact them. So one of the baselines that I always uh, try to propound and many times I get shot down is that for-profit education should be permitted in India. And I uh, noticed that uh, there is some uh, support for that in this room at least. If it was somewhere else, maybe I would have had to have security. <laughs> And, um, and, and the reason for that is I've seen a lot of transactions and a lot of uh, problems when there is this trust and society structure. I think it is a structure which is a structure of legacy and it was there for a reason. But um, in Haryana, for example, we've noticed that you can have a private company uh, set up a school. And of course, there were questions that one of our clients asked us. Yes, a private company can set up the school, but when I go and register for RTE, the forms that are there don't have a school mentioned in it, a company mentioned in it, it only says trust or society, so what do I do? So we had to come up with innovative kind of uh, ideas for our clients. We said fine, just add the word company in hand in the form and go and file the application. I said what is going to happen? They're going to say this is not permitted and then you'll be able to say that the school act which takes precedence permits a company. So many small small things like that that we've come across we've realized that if you have a company and i think Parthi also mentioned this earlier your level of governance increases tremendously your level of tran uh, transparency increases tremendously you're under the under the control of the register of companies you have to have meetings whereas a trust in a society though some of us may find it beneficial for our structure is very opaque and uh, you don't really need to do anything uh, you just have to have uh, the legal entity and, and, and then you carry on your business. Problem starts when you want to expand, when you want to get private investment. Uh, where does an investor, whether it's foreign or domestic, where is he going to put his money? Uh, then you create your service company structure, then you create another real estate company structure and then it just keeps becoming a complete uh, mushroom, you know, it just grows in different directions. So we, so, so that's the structure we are, we are, we are faced with today and, and that requires a lot of, uh, it involves a lot of risk and, and it requires a lot of analysis. But so the one suggestion that I have is to the extent possible, if Haryana can do it, uh, I think other states should follow uh, a for-profit structure model for those who want to do it. Uh, they can certainly be uh, the NOC still requirement required from the government. I'm not saying you turn it away and just become completely out, outside the regulatory purview, but that is one particular uh, suggestion that I have, at least from my experience. The second is on fee regulation. Um, that uh, number of states, as you all know better than me, have started coming with their own fee regulation legislations. We have filed a writ petition in the Bombay High Court. Uh, we have challenged the constitutional validity of the Maharashtra Free Regulation Act. Um, and we've noticed two things. Uh, we, we, we formed an association called the Association of International Schools. Th th that's the name the client chose. <laughs> They're all private schools. Uh, but what we found was that the manner in which the regulation was drafted, and the manner in which it is being implemented, is nothing short of extortion. What they have done is they have completely taken away the powers of management from the school. 
So if you're a private unaided school, uh, you're not taking any money from the government, you're not taking any resources from the government. You now have a situation, as Mr. Panda pointed out, customer choice versus citizen choice. One of us, one of our schools, 99% of the parents uh, and therefore their students were very happy with the school. This is in just outside Pune. Very, very happy with the school. There were three parents who uh, went to the district uh, education officer and filed a complaint under the Fee Regulation Act. Even when the Fee Regulation Act was not in force because the rules hadn't been framed without going into technicalities. And they brought that school to a standstill for over four months. And until we tried every possible uh, avenue, we went all the way up to the minister uh, in Maharashtra. We then decided to file the writ petition challenging the law itself as unconstitutional uh, in the Bombay High Court. We got a stay order from the Bombay High Court. So as far as uh, private schools in Maharashtra are concerned, for 15-16, they don't have to follow the Fee Regulation Act. Uh, and uh, we, uh, now of course it's applicable going forward. Uh, and, and then we realized that it was just three or four parents who were creating. So then we went back to the government and said, okay, if you really want a Fee Regulation Act, let's not fight it. Because at the end of the day, if a government is not going to um, find favor in what you're trying to tell them, then the next best thing is to try and change the regulation to the extent possible. So instead of having these draconian uh, uh, features of uh, all decision being simply farmed out to the parents, we said, why don't you have a more uh, balanced executive committee? Why don't you permit schools to raise fees up to 10% on an annual basis? And if they want to go beyond 10%, uh, then maybe this some mechanism can be followed. Uh, and so we've made those suggestions uh, to the Maharashtra government. The Maharashtra government has yet not filed its reply in the Bombay High Court writ. And they've actually told the Bombay High Court that we are studying these uh, suggestions and we might come up with some amended rules. So that's, so as a law firm, we've, we've tried to, when it, 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 it will start with the client coming to us and saying, I have a problem. Uh, and then it's whether you deal with one client's problem or you try and make it a broader, because it's always better to go in numbers. So we've been doing a little bit of that. Uh, so, so that's another thing I think on fee regulation and on, on um, one of the low cost schools that we were advising, um, there, how much time we spent, you know, I mean, lawyers shouldn't have to spend, I mean, lawyers love spending time because you get paid for it, but um, <laughs> for a low cost school, which is really providing such great service bottom of the pyramid, the school has to spend so much time and effort in determining its structure because it's a for-profit, but it's still providing bottom of the pyramid. So it's not nothing wrong with it, right? Uh, but that means what should I have an LLP? Should I have a company? Can I own the land? I have an MOU with the government which says this, the government's law and regulation says that. Uh, will I get covered under RTE or do I need to take a specific exemption? So we lawyers will draft memorandums and memorandums and create these be beautiful structured charts. And I was talking to my team the other day. I said all this for a low cost school, which is going to serve the bottom of the pyramid and they have to spend so much time. So therefore my other suggestion is that for, uh, and you are all the experts, but if, a def if some definition can be brought about for what is a low cost school, and uh, if they could just be excluded from all, I mean, I would just say exclude them from fee regulation, exclude them from RTE. Uh, I'm not an expert in RTE, but, uh, or at least from the draconian measures of, uh, because the cost will go up and you all know that better than me. And therefore it will be easier for them to, uh, uh, to set up and, and, and uh, you know, really provide the service that they, that they have to provide. The other big thing everyone tells me when I talk about for profit is that, oh, then there'll only be prof only be pure commercialization, and I'm sure you've heard this argument argument many times. But in the Bombay High Court, we've actually relied on TMA Pai's decision in the Supreme Court, which talks about profiteering is wrong, but making profit is not wrong. It's the intention that is important, and I think the Bombay High Court has uh, uh, taken that into consideration when it at least looked at it at a prima facie stage. So we hope we are able to get something broader out of that um, uh, going forward. Um, so I think, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, uh, you can go to our website that we have written some papers on education uh, from a legal perspective. Uh, and uh, from, and we've, we've looked at even things which are completely unregulated, low cost, ed tech, higher education, K-12, and try to, uh, you know, give our views. And we'd really look forward to uh, working with all of you and, and getting more inputs and see how we can contribute uh, 
uh, to to this entire uh, process so i think that's what i'll say for the time being